merch, man. It's just merch. It's just merch. Ah, it's just merch. Guys, this merch is so good, it should be illegal. Go shop at BigBearWeatherAndMore.com to get yours. Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy April Fool's Day, April 1st, 2024. This is the aftermath video of our third biggest snowstorm of the season in Big Bear, California. So, wanted to take you guys through the snowiest part of town and the least snowiest part of town. Basically, the entire main part of Big Bear Valley. So you can see what ended up happening here. Hope you're having a great day. chilly out here it's 35 degrees but we got temperatures warming up in the next few days we could hit the 50s in about two days but then we have another storm coming in this, this next weekend it's not going to be anything like this storm but it's, it's going to be more snow so that's good should have gone the other way because there's probably a lot of people leaving town right now so we, we could catch a little bit of traffic but oh well again give you guys the real perspective of what's going on and don't forget if you want to help the channel guys go to bigbearweathermore.com check out the merchandise that'd be awesome or in the description of the video there's other ways to help thank you appreciate it <coughs> those of you coming up skiing we're coming up to the best snowboard and ski rental shops in Big Bear it's called get boards best prices friendliest staff especially most knowledgeable staff definitely give them a chance they absolutely rock there's one of their shops on the corner right here it's, that's Alden Street and the next street they have another one on the corner of Knickerbocker right there and cool enough the village is just one block away so it's, it's very centrally located great location again prices are amazing the equipment is top-notch the service is incredible you guys will be super stoked if you mention that you're a friend of the channel they'll take care of you and if you bring in your own equipment they'll wax it for free if you mention you're a friend of the channel and uh, there's not much more time to go skiing and snowboarding guys so if you want to save money on your lift tickets you're going to have to order them quickly and go to getboards.com 72 hours in advance of the day you plan on skiing and you will save a good chunk of money as opposed to going to the ticket window at the resort the day you are going skiing. So go to getboards.com 72 hours in advance, save some cash. And one more little last plug another shop owner up here who deserves a lot of love a lot of support his name is Sahil he owns Big Bear Smoke and Vape he has two shops one in the, uh, the city and one in Big Bear Lake the guys super amazing you guys like just the nicest guy he doesn't price gouge up here. He treats everyone fairly. It's not just smoke and vape stuff. Give them a shot as well. They're super, super cool. If you mention I sent you, he'll take care of you as well. Um, all every, Everyone's information is in the description of these videos. And for get boards and whatnot, they're in the comment section as well. So come up here, support the owners who care about you guys. Super important. 
super important. And of course, for my coffee lovers, Big Bear Coffee Roasting Company, they supply most of these other shops and restaurants with their coffee. It's the freshest coffee up here. There's really no other in-house roasters up here. Big Bear Coffee Roasting Company will make your day. I promise you that. I always get so so disappointed when the uh, snow is about to melt up here because the village is always such a such a really really pretty place when we have snow on the ground. It's a cute place when we don't, but when there's snow like this, it's it's really pretty. is a super 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 slight chance for a snow flurry today I don't see it happening but that potential is out there I like doing the aftermath once every bit of snow is gone though but at this point, as I said, I don't think anything else is going to happen, but we'll see. And yeah, there's going to be some traffic going out of town. Over here is a place where you can pay, pay to go sledding. This is the Alpine Slide at Magic Mountain. They have a couple roller coasters here as well. As you can see, someone on the roller coaster, well, there's quite a few people on the roller coaster right now, but it's a lot of fun, you guys. It's a lot of fun. I think the sledding for an all day pass is like 40 or $45. And uh, the roller coaster for adults, I know is 20 bucks per person per ride. It's fun just to do it once, you know? try it out check it out get some some nice views while you're sledding down on that roller coaster the roller coaster is called uh, I think it's called the mine shaft because we are a gold mining town so went up to 38 degrees. Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday were supposed to be in the low to mid 50s. And then Thursday and Friday, some more snow. But it's going to get really cold on Friday. We're going to have one of the coldest high temperatures we've had all season, which is crazy. It's going to be right above 20 degrees for the high temperature. Seriously, guys, this time of year, that's unheard of. And our low temperatures are going to be in the mid-teens on Friday, this coming Friday, which is crazy. Thursday, I'm really nervous because I have to go in for a deep cleaning for my teeth. And I don't like needles in my mouth. So I've been like stressing on this. Because they're going to like numb me up, I guess, like they would if they're giving you a filling. But if they're deep cleaning, then that means like they're numbing like your whole mouth. So it's probably going to be like four different shots. I am 
not excited about it. Hopefully they uh, have the, uh, the nitrous stuff to help calm, calm me down while I'm there. I know a lot of dentist office do offer that. But if I had the choice, I would tell them, just put me to sleep. You know? <laughs> just put me to sleep and do it. Kind of like they do with our pets. But I'm even too scared to get my cat's teeth totally cleaned. Because I don't want them to put my cat to, cat to sleep like that. But yeah, we're entering the snowiest part of Big Bear, you guys. It's so beautiful over here. This is such... This is... This is the prettiest part of Big Bear Valley, what we're driving through now. Definitely the prettiest part. Snowiest part. And remember, when I say the snowiest area in Big Bear Valley, that's at the valley floor. When you get up to Upper Moon Ridge and a small part of, of, of Upper Sugarloaf, I call it Upper Sugarloaf, um, you'll get even more snow up there. But when it comes to the valley itself, this is this, we're entering the snowiest part of the valley. As you can see from where we started, just this short little drive over here, there's significantly more snow over here. Significantly. I mean, look how beautiful that is. All these all these trees just completely covered with snow. Temperature's still 38. Usually it'll cool down a little bit over here. So I'll see if, if the temp drops at all. Yep, 37 degrees now. this is sad because uh, these videos are, are going to be fewer and fewer. Although, again, we do have another storm in like four days coming in. So three days, actually. But I haven't even made any April Fool's jokes yet, guys. If I drive off the cliff, you guys, that is not an April Fool's joke. That is a really horrible accident. So don't think I'm just joking if I slide off, off the edge, you know. That's not not a good joke, so I, I apologize about that. But just uh, just warning you, that would not be an April Fool's joke. Wow, it is just so incredible out here, man. traffic wasn't anything like I thought it would be. Snowiest part of town. Potholes have developed again. Some pretty serious ones over here. So please keep that in mind when you guys are coming up here in the next week or so. Be very careful. They are really bad potholes type that can ruin your day, so please be careful. Alright, instead of going straight here, we're going to turn right. Wow, 
looks like someone crashed into the, uh, or something happened. I wonder what happened here. Anyway, we're going straight. We're not going that way. I, I, I meant we're turning right. We're not going that way. This is going to be pretty for a while, right along the lake. We'll roll down the window on the other side so we get fully unobstructed views. across the lake I usually can't I mean I can see everything over there always but it's really crystal clear today it seems like the lake is just a little puddle houses on this side of the road right here with this lake view oh man but you gotta pay to play right you gotta pay to play so this video should be a good reflection of what's of what I've referred to as the big bear snow rule the big bear snow rule basically means that one side of town always has more snow than the other even though it's only like a seven and a half mile difference in distance there's always a huge discrepancy from the big bear dam where we were just at the snowiest part of town we're headed to this least snowiest part of our beautiful valley called baldwin lake and i'm excited to see what the discrepancy is today It's always shocking to me actually even though I after years of doing this I know that there's gonna be significantly less snow out there funny enough not this storm but the last storm was a very rare storm that came in from the back side and the storm dumped a good amount of snow in the least snowiest part of town and the Big Bear Dam didn't get as much. Pretty interesting. I think maybe the last time that happened was maybe five or six years ago, you guys. So it's it's extremely rare that that happens. I, I can't even say five or six years ago because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't, I don't remember really ever, even though I'm sure I've recorded it, I don't ever remember there being more snow on Baldwin's side than there is over by the dam. sauce on the ham was amazing. 
her deviled eggs just knocked it out of the park. The, ma the, the mashed potatoes from these beautiful potatoes were just spectacular. The asparagus was amazing. Like the, the rolls were great. Like she's, she's just amazing. She's such a, such an amazing wife. I love that lady. Okay, so we're gonna be entering the fawn skin area. And over here is where the eagle habitat is, where our world famous eagles reside and nest in one of these trees right over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Right, for a place to stay on this side of town where it's really quiet come to this place behind this brown fence called the outpost they've done an amazing job renovating it changing everything about it it's it looks amazing the pictures are insane the owners are just awesome right in there and it's right on grout creek tributary my favorite tributary in this whole town when it's flowing the outpost so the only way you can rent a room there is you have to go to the outpostbigbear.com because you can't rent a room there on Expedia or Hotels.com. But it's right on this tributary. Just a wonderful spot. I'm telling you guys, just a wonderful spot. This is a great part of town, you guys. Fonskin's a wonderful little area. It's, it's, it's far away from all the hustle and bustle of what's going on in the main part of Big Bear. Of course, Fonskin's right on the lake also, you guys, so it's still on Big Bear Lake. Just pushed away in this corner over here. And once again, it is really, really quiet over here. So if you want to come up here and enjoy this peace and serenity even more, get a place over here. And you still get a, a great amount of snow over here too. This is definitely not one of the least snowiest part of towns. You get more snow over here than Big Bear City and Baldwin Lake and most of Irwin Lake. and So it's still a good place to be. And ever since I first moved here, this house on the corner right here, I grew up on a little island in Newport Beach called Linda Isle. And this house reminds me of like some, some of the houses on on Linda Isle, just old, older houses, like 50s, 60s type, type houses and stuff like that. It's just always brought back a lot of uh, nostalgia for me, making me think of my childhood when everything was perfect and my family got along great, everyone loved each other, back when my parents were successful and not elderly now and both of them seriously struggling, just breaks my heart, you know? Both of them came from nothing and worked their butts off. And now, now, now they have nothing again. Literally nothing. They both live off their social security without anything extra, just their basic social security. Um, I mean, shoot, that house that I grew up in, guys, on Linda Isle, on the corner of Bayside Drive and Pacific Coast Highway, on a little private island, my dad bought that house, I think in the early 60s for like three or $400,000. On Zillow today, it's $13.5 million. How crazy is that, you guys?
the house I grew up in had seven bedrooms, seven bathrooms, an elevator, two staircases, two living rooms. Um, we had a 69 foot yacht called the, uh, the Malia right in back at our dock um, and a catamaran and a Boston whaler. Maybe it wasn't a Boston whaler, but like a Chris Craft or something like that. And I'm so proud of my mom and dad because as I said, they both grew up with absolutely nothing. My dad put himself through UCLA and Northwestern Medical School driving a taxi. Like no, no loans, parents didn't have anything. Like uh, my dad spent a lot of time on the weekends in orphanages because his parents were working and just a, a lot of other issues. And this was in the south side of Chicago. So my dad was born in 1932. So that, that part of Chicago was a lot different than it is today. But uh, yeah, I'm just uh, super proud of my mom and dad. I, I, I wish they didn't lose everything 20 years ago or so. Even though they were divorced, they both lost everything around the same, same time. Um, just really horrible situations and uh, yeah, it just breaks my heart. But the fact that they were able to, to live that type of life for such a long time and give me that life for 15 years is just unbelievable. I mean, that house I grew up in, that was my mom and dad's beach house vacation home. Their main home was in the Las Feliz Hills up up by the Hollywood sign and it was like 12,000 square feet. It was one Linwood Drive. I never got to live there, but all my six older siblings who were 10 plus years older than me, they all got to live there. And then they would vacation in the summertime at the house that I grew up in. I mean, guys, it was as MTV Cribs as you can imagine. And the fact that I've, I've tasted that because of, of my parents' past success, you know, I know it's not for everybody, but I want, I want that again. And I want to be able to give my kids everything. The only difference is since my parents had nothing when they, they grew up, I mean, dirt poor, they gave all their kids everything. And it, it kind of hindered a lot of us for many, many years, especially me because I was the seventh kid, but I was born 10 and a half years after the next oldest. So I was basically an only child. And uh, if my parents wouldn't have lost everything, guys, I would not be in this situation I'm in now. I'd still be a total loser, a bum, being enabled all the time. But now for five years, since uh, December of 2018, I've been paying for my mom's car, which is like, I never thought I'd ever be able to give back to that woman for everything I put her through and everything that she's done for me. And God bless her, she needs it, man. She needs it. Of course, I always tell you guys that I don't get left with with anything you know, after I pay all, all my bills up here and stuff, but who cares? Like my bills get paid. I don't care that much that it's a struggle most of the time, but I'm just very, very proud of what I've been able to accomplish on my own without having anything to fall back on. Passing Stanfield Cutoff. This is the end of Big Bear Lake on this street right here. To the right, that's all Big Bear Lake. The lake itself and 
Big Bear Lake, the city. Now we're entering Big Bear City right now. Again, guys, just try to remember how much snow we were... Hey, look at the snowman. Hey, Mr. Snowman. It's a cute snowman. A little bit overweight, but a really cute snowman. Um, remember how much snow you just saw at the Big Bear Dam, and it's just going to get less and less and less the further we go this way. I would imagine in Baldwin, guys, there's going to be a lot of dry patches. You'll see. It's just crazy. We get a foot of snow or more at the dam, and then there will be like an inch in Baldwin. Highway 38, AKA North Shore. But staying straight on this road, it's gonna turn into Highway 18. If, as we continue on that, we're gonna almost be going to where we uh, end up leaving Big Bear and heading down the mountain into Lucerne Valley, Victorville, Apple Valley, Yucca Valley, all of those areas. That's where we're, we are headed right now. And uh, as a matter of fact, we're gonna go up to the top where that beautiful view is and look down on the desert and it should be so sick right now. <coughs> Temperature's back up to 38 degrees. And we're coming up to the transition where you, uh, if you're not paying attention, you're not gonna be on Highway 38 anymore. If you wanna stay on Highway 38, up here you need to turn right on Greenway. And then when you get to Big Bear Boulevard, you turn left again, and then in about a mile, you'll be back on Highway 38. It's the, it's the, it's the weirdest thing. That's how a lot of the roads up here are. If you're not paying attention and just stay straight on one road, it turns into a different one. So look, here's the sign showing you right for, how, Highway 38 right here. Now we're on Highway 18. The other day, I, I have a huge music genre that I love was just a little bit of everything, right? Um, I was never a big Ed Sheeran fan. I don't know why, because he's got good good music. Maybe it, it, it's just, when I look at him, I just, it just doesn't sound like the, the sounds that, that, that are coming out are coming from him. But there's that song, Perfect, or something like that, but he did it with Andrea Bocelli. Um, I guess they traveled out to um, to Italy and did a collaboration with Andrea Bocelli to sing that song, and it was unbelievable. Check it out on on YouTube. Just type in Ed Sheeran and Andrea Bocelli. Just incredible, incredible. Just just watching that made me a much bigger fan of uh, Ed Sheeran. I love classical music.
I always have, even though most of my life I never wanted to admit it, because that's not something you admit to your friends when you're younger, but, and that's coming from a punk rocker, you guys. I used to go to so many punk shows back in the mid, late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, a lot, like maybe, maybe at, at one point, one per week through LA and Corona and just, uh, yeah. All right, we're coming out to Baldwin Lake right now, guys. This is not part of the lake per se, this water right here, but we are about to, on the other side of the fence right here, this is all Baldwin Lake. Everything you see right there. Oh, it's, it's, it's crazy cool. It looks horrifying, that color. It looks like you'll melt if you touch it. But we'll get a closer view in just a moment. That's Baldwin Lake now. Look at how big it is. Holy moly, guys. It's a real huge lake right now, guys. And this is this is usually dry most of the year, but now it's a giant lake. All those houses on that side, they're all lakefront property for a couple months. It's so cool. snowy part of town in about a minute literally about 60 seconds and you guys are gonna be shocked as you can already see on those hills right there there's no snow literally no snow on most of that over there crazy dry patches everywhere over here 39 degrees now So those of you who want to rent an Airbnb up here, but you don't want to be in all the snow, which is weird to me because why, you know, you come up here for the snow, right? But you want to stay in Baldwin Lake or parts of Irwin Lake. But look at this. Look at how dry it is out here. It's just amazing. Amazing. What the? I mean, look, there's, there's not even any plowing or like snow plow snow. I'm serious, guys, this is crazy. It's even less than I thought it would be. said we're gonna go up to that desert view this, we're going to the very top of the road the very top of highway 18 as we're about to go down down a couple feet just to get to one of the 
pullouts that has a better, easier view, but this one might not be so so bad. So look, we're at the very top now, about to start going down into the beautiful desert. I'm gonna see if we can capture this view just walking out here for a second. Hang on. Because we do gotta get this video over. It's already a super long video. Oh, that is so pretty. You can see so clearly today. So guys, that's the desert down there. We're a lot higher up than it looks, you guys. At the very closest part of the desert there, it's about close to 3,000 feet in, in elevation. That's the high desert out there. But the further you are looking out there, you're getting closer to, closer to sea level. It's pretty awesome, huh? This is the easiest route to come in and out of Big Bear, by the way, you guys, always. It takes me nine or 10 minutes to get from the top to the bottom. Always significantly less amounts of snow going down, down and up this route into beautiful Big Bear Valley. But the only problem with it, you guys, is this road, most of you live on the LA side of the mountain range, most of you. So that, that means that you would have to take the Cajon Pass, the 15, through the mountain range into the high desert and then cut across, it's called Bear Valley Road. So when you're on the 15, the Cajon Pass, once you get to the top, it's about 10 miles and then you'll hit Bear Valley Road. You turn right on Bear Valley. Easy to remember because you're coming to Big Bear Valley, right? So get on Bear Valley Road, you turn right, and you go until it dead ends. It'll take you about 20 minutes or so, maybe a little bit more. And it, it, it dead ends at Highway 18. Then you make a right-hand turn. And then once again, if you're not paying attention and you stay straight at a certain point, you'll be on Highway 247 instead of Highway 18. So pay attention to the roads because it'll say to stay on Highway 18, you need to, to, to make a right-hand turn here. So just Highway 15, all the way to Bear Valley Road, turn right on Bear Valley, go till it dead ends at Highway 18, make a right on Highway 18, just follow the signs to Big Bear. Pretty simple stuff. Pretty darn simple. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get myself one of my, one of my Zins real quick without having to cut off the camera. But yeah, look, look at just this like no snow over here. Again, it's always shocking to me, even though I know there's always gonna be significantly less snow over here. Our friend Gabriel from the channel, you guys, he, he brought his family up this way. He's from LA and got here two, two days ago and wanted to take this route because it's safer and you get a beautiful drive through the high desert guys it's it's well worth it it's well worth it if, i would say it probably would take you an extra hour and a half to make it up here coming from the other side of the mountain range 
but again, it's really, really worth it. You're not going to deal with, with much and, uh, A nice surprise is uh, when you get up here you're gonna see like no snow right here and probably be super disappointed but then the further you go back into Big Bear it's gonna be a lot more exciting full of snow all right so we're gonna cut through here through Baldwin Lake and go back to town this direction Horse Crossing. This is a big equestrian part of town. That's something that I really want to do for the first time up here is this summer. I, I'd like to go horseback riding, wear a GoPro up here and uh, show you guys some of the horseback riding trails and stuff like that up here. Baldwin Lake, baby. Look at how little snow's over here. We're still in the in, in, in the like half mile range of the least snowiest part of town. Just nothing. I mean, little patches, of course, but just nothing. What's up, bro? Thanks for getting back to me. So uh, apparently we already uh, um, went with uh, some place for six months, but I'll still, I'll still give you a call because I know you could probably point me in the right direction, my brother. Great to hear from you, Matt. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you soon, my man. Hope to see you soon, man. So such a trip guys. We've had a friend of the channel for quite some time now. He goes by Zip Zip. That's his uh, username. He owns an insurance company. Just a just and loves me to death. Like it's so cool to have people who you know love me so much here. It just feels so so good. But anyway, funny enough Growing up in Newport Beach, I had a good friend um, in my, like, from about 11 years old is when we, we met, and his name is Mike, Mike Hamrock. And I never knew that Zip had a similar, or the, the same last name, but I thought there's no way that it could be the, you know the same family but long story short I ended up asking him about it because I was lucky enough to meet my new friend Matt in person and he sent me a picture of him so when I got out of the car I would know who I'm looking for and I was like dude so funny you have the same last name and you look just like one of my friends who I grew up with. And funny enough, it ended up being that guy, Mike's brother, <laughs> his older brother, Matt. So I, yeah, it's just a super small world. Um, I love when things like that happen. But anyway, over here to the left, you guys, this is, a, as I said, a big e like equestrian and kind of a farm part of the town. They've got a lot of a lot of animals over here and ranches and a beautiful part of town.
very beautiful part of town. Once again, we're in Baldwin Lake. And instead of taking Big Bear Boulevard all the way back home, as soon as we can cut across and start to take the back streets, I'm gonna take you the back way all the way into Moon Ridge, which is where I reside. my car in a big way I just don't like to wash it at all during uh, winter time because it gets filthy there's a lot of dirt roads up here I drive with my windows down a lot for these videos and even when it's snowing I'll roll them down often to get as unobstructed a view as possible for you guys while I'm freezing and getting a couple snowflakes coming in. But that's what these cars were made. Made for. Just I don't know if it's you know, made for that, but this little 100 yard strip is one of my favorite to drive through in this town. It's just we're driving under a tunnel of trees. Now we're out of it for the most part. This direction, which we're going to obviously continue, the more snow we're going to come into. Temperature drops back down to 37. this field when there's snow on it. I don't know why. You've got to be kidding me. We're getting a couple snowflakes right now. Dang it. I, well, not dang it, but this, you know, this is the aftermath video. I guarantee you this is all it's going to be, guys. It's just these couple of snow flurries. Right. This is Highway 38. That's another way in and out of Big Bear. That's my favorite route coming up to Big Bear. It's, it's the longest route into town, but as far as I'm concerned, the prettiest. It doesn't have as many views as Highway 330. Those views where you're, you're looking down 5,000, 6,000 feet into San Bernardino, LA, it's Riverside, Orange County. So that's pretty remarkable views. But Highway 38, why I love it so much is because it goes into the middle of the mountain range and it runs parallel to how the mountains run. So it, it, it feels like you're in a much bigger mountain range and it's just, it's just awesome. Highway 38 does hit the highest elevation of any of our roads at 8,443 feet. So sometimes you, you can get a lot of snow up there But 
there's less turning on that road, a consistent 55 mile per hour speed limit, I prefer that road. I'd like to refer you guys on that road also. But again, you you can come into a ton of snow up, up at the top. And we're gonna turn left here. We're gonna go all the way into Moon Ridge, taking this back route. So we're turning left on Paradise. Usually when there's a lot of snow, there'll be bumper to bumper traffic on Big Bear Boulevard right there, all the way into Big Bear Lake, and it's an absolute nightmare. This is a back route that I want you guys to learn. And just remember you're driving through neighborhoods, so don't be speeding. Drive respectfully through here. That's why I show you guys these back routes to save you time, because I know you're not gonna drive through here disrespectfully. Believe it or not, a very limited hand, like just the smallest handful, not even a handful, just a, a couple people up here always get so mad at me because I'm trying to save you guys time and show you guys the fastest way through town. They get so upset about it. And I have to, this is why you, 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 uh, you, uh, you don't speed and right. have fun you guys. <laughs> Adorable little kids. But that's why you don't speed through here because you just saw kids running out like that. But yeah, I get a small handful of people who get so bitter that I try to save you guys time. I'm telling you guys, when we do have like these good snowstorms in, in the middle of them and uh, all that traffic out there, it can take you over an hour just to get to the, the Big Bear Dam. Or, sorry, the Big Bear Village. And then another half hour from there, at least, to get to the dam. This will get you all the way close to the village in 15 to 20 minutes, no matter how much traffic is out there. This road will look like this still. So you just want to take this. And right now, uh, we're on aeroplane. So Paradise turned into Aeroplane, and now we're gonna make a left on Sawmill. And this street here, Sawmill, will turn into Sugarloaf Boulevard, and you stay on, the, you, once you turn left here, you stay on this until it dead ends at Division Road, and then you'll make a left to head into Moon Ridge. scares me because you can't see over that hump the cars come flying from this direction and there's a lot of really close calls right there but that last one is even gnarlier. But we're good. We're on Sugar Loaf now. This is my wife's old house right there, right on the corner. gonna keep it so we had you know so we could stay there half the week and at my place half the week just so you know we wouldn't feel so uh, so much island fever up here you know but she ended up getting rid of it and that's okay
when she moved out, they jacked up that rent significantly. She was so lucky. She was only paying a thousand bucks for that two bedroom place. Two story, two bedroom, a huge backyard. And I think they're charging almost double now for the new new renters. But that's that's what's been happening up here for the past many years is the rents are getting out of control. I think th things are starting to calm down a bit, which is, I'm very, very thankful for that. Division Road, as you can see, it dead ends right here. If you turn right, you'll be right at Big Bird Boulevard. In two, two or three blocks, you can actually see where those cars are stopped. That's Big Bird Boulevard. So we avoided, if there was traffic, we avoided all that traffic. And now we're gonna avoid all the rest of the traffic going into Big Bear Lake. Again, there's not much right now, but it's just a uh, hypothetical for when it's actually truly happening like that. I think for giggles, we are gonna go into Upper Moon Ridge for a second. I wasn't going to, I was just gonna do the full valley tour of the main part of Big Bear Valley, but I think it'd be nice if we went up into Upper Moon Ridge, don't you? See all the snow up there. Farm Road, but when we make a left, it's going to turn into McAllister. Hey, let me get back to you in a little bit. I'm making the aftermath video. I'm an hour into it. Another 20 minutes or so, I'll get back to you. right-hand turn here on a street called Butte to launch us way up into Upper Moon Ridge. But we're gonna, and then we end up getting back on Villa Grove up there. But we're gonna stay on Villa Grove here. I don't remember if this will take 
take us all the way where I'm trying to go, but either way, it's different. That's where Villa Grove ends down here. It's so weird how these streets work. Some of these homes have such unbelievable views, you guys. Over here to the left of the whole entire valley. These houses right here. The valley, the lake. Maybe there will be a little opening to where you guys can see a little better. Uh, not much of an opening. That's too bad. Because it is wonderful. We're getting into Upper Moon Ridge now. A, a different portion of Upper Moon Ridge. Take this. As far as we can go, I don't remember the last time I went all the way down to the end of this route. I think it might like wrap around or something, but we'll see. Temperature's 37 degrees again as we're climbing in elevation. Again, we are entering the, the snowiest neighborhood in all of Big Bear. All right, so what is this street up here? Hey, it's Villa Grove. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so Butte is just right there. And that took us exactly where we needed to be. Perfect, guys. So we're gonna do the full circle in Upper Moon Ridge. Drive by Bear real quick, like we always do, because it's much easier than Summit. We try to go by Summit as often as we can, but because of traffic, it's really hard to get close to, to Snow Summit. Bear's a lot easier. portion of this part of Upper Moon Ridge will be our snowiest part.
two or three of you who are still watching. If you haven't already, which you probably have because you're the only one still watching, hit that like and subscribe button. Help me out. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. turns into sunny slope right now and then sunny slope is going to turn into La Crescenta and then typically on this portion of Upper Moon Ridge we'll start to hit the snowiest part of Upper Moon Ridge If we go to the left, we'd be going into Moonloaf, which is the connector way up here between Upper Moon Ridge and Sugarloaf. We are not doing that. Straight ahead through those trees right there is Bear Mountain. If we can get any good views to the right, I will show you. we got nothing to worry about on these roads up here and our snow plows guys these folks keep this town running our snow plow people are uh, they do such such a such a great job of course a lot of the side streets don't get as much action when it comes to the snow plows but all the main roads they do such a great job all right so now we're gonna start heading back down we're going to turn right here on Canyon Crest. And we'll get a couple little beautiful views straight ahead of the valley. Let me zoom in here so you can see that. It's nice, huh? And then coming up is a little peekaboo view of the lake. I'm telling you a little peekaboo view. I don't even think 
we were able to see it today. left on Calusa. Calusa. For some reason it just makes me think of like a, a roller coaster ride. Probably because I'm thinking of Colossus. But So over here to the left is Bear Mountain beyond these houses with loads of snow. I know again it's hard to see. But these houses have some pretty amazing views and they're pretty amazing houses themselves. so perfect up here. It really is. We're starting to drop down into Middle Moon Ridge. Okay, this little area right here, this is on one of our four free sledding locations. This big uh, gully here, it, it goes all between Moon Ridge right here, this whole area, and it's great to take your kids sledding. Just make sure you've you find a legit place to park. Why this is so great is because you've got some some wonderful spots to uh, either have steeper runs or not so steep. And every time when your kids get down to the bottom, it's not the biggest hill per se, but your kids will never ever have to worry about getting hit by cars or anything. Cause as soon as they get down to the bottom, they start going back up that other side. It's a very safe spot. And one of the last things I want to show you guys is our Airbnb on this channel. Right here, this brown house. But there's someone staying there right now who's outside, so I don't want to be rude and point the camera at them. But if you have, if you have any questions about that and you guys want to stay at an Airbnb in one of the snowiest parts of Big Bear, right next to Bear Mountain, the information is in the description of the video and if you need more info just hit me up leave me a comment or something and i will get back to you okay there's a beautiful bear It's a bear, folks, and that's going to be it. But it's going to be one of the most beautiful parts. in Southern California. There's nothing that even comes a close second for me.
guys. Thanks for cruising with me today. Hope you enjoyed the drive. Hope you enjoyed the aftermath. Keep in mind, we do have some more snow coming in on Thursday and Friday. The, I believe the 4th and the 5th of April, 2024. So get ready for that. It's not gonna be too significant, but it's still gonna be more snow. We're always happy to see that. And we want you guys to come up here and enjoy it while it lasts. Get your buns up here. Again, if you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to ask. I am here for you guys. I want you guys to have the best time possible. Without you guys coming up here and being patrons of this town, none of us get to live here. You guys create our economy. I am very thankful for each and every single one of you because I do get to live here um, because of you guys. So thank you again. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Share these videos. Try to help this little tiny channel grow a bit. I've been doing it for just about nine years now almost 3600 videos a lot of effort and time put into this channel so please please help me out like that don't forget bigbearweatherandmore.com get yourself some awesome merchandise all this great stuff can be yours and when you when you do get it wear it with pride anyway have a wonderful rest of your day guys be good to each other be kind always and i will talk to you later until next time, until Wednesday for the calm before the storm, I will talk to you later.